Thank you. Ambassador to the group, officials from the uh, uh, from the government offices, NETA, DDI, DFA, and DOLE, the agency heads, industry stakeholders. The Department of Agriculture expresses its appreciation to the European Union, in particular to the delegation to the Philippines led by His uh, Excellency Ambassador Piradu, uh, for continually providing assistance and support to the capability building initiatives for the Philippines to reduce uh, poverty. We particularly thank the EUD for their assistance in the field of sanitary and phytosanitary capacity building through the SPS subcomponent in the trade related technical assistance, the RTA2 project. As the country's primary rural development agency, VA recognizes the need for initiatives that will enhance the competitiveness of the agriculture and fishery sector, especially in today's highly globalized trade. We need to stimulate and enhance the sector's trade capabilities to help them better integrate in the global economy and face both the challenges and opportunities it offers. The formulation and implementation of internationally recognized and accepted sanitary and phytosanitary standards and measures is key to helping in the agriculture sectors to easily integrate sanitary and phytosanitary practices. The DA and our regulatory agencies have been direct and active participants in the SPS component of the TRTA projects. TRTA 1 first undertaken in 2005 to 2007 and TRTA 2 which was started implementing in 2009 and which will soon end in August this year. Much remains to be done, hence we look forward to the continuation of the efforts under the next round, PRTA3. As a matter of policy, and to better respond to the challenges in the global market, the VA has been uh, keen on enhancing our SPS management and administration. Efforts at streamlining and harmonization of SPS policy and measures are painstakingly being addressed. Please note that our structure as a number of, as a number of regulatory agencies performing SPS functions on a commodity-based setup. As most of you will know, setup uh, makes coordination and collaboration very challenging, especially if we are to ensure consistent and cohesive SPS policy formulation and implementation. It is in this aspect that ERDA2 has helped the VA in enhancing our SPS management and administration. The, the codification of SPS and related VA legal uh, issues are among the key topics. We aim to create and heighten awareness, understanding, and appreciation of SPS principles and measures, particularly their implications on the international trading of agricultural and fishery products. Let me highlight the following reasons for the codification in accordance with the codification framework recommended by the another legal expert commissioned by ERTA. A, to facilitate the collection and systematic arrangement of the SPS and other related legal issuances in a coherent and logical manner. B, to provide us with a tool for policy review and formulation to reduce confusion, overlaps, and inconsistency and inconsistencies, and C, to serve the private sector by allowing electronic accessibility of the issuances, thereby facilitating the trade to improve information ability and availability and transparency of SPS-related regulations and measures which the industry needs to know and comply with. I encourage you to use this tool for both information access and gaining feedback. In light of this, let me take this opportunity to announce that the priority legislative agenda titled An Act to Strengthen the Food Safety Regulatory System in the Country to Protect Consumer Health and Facilitate Market Access of Local Foods and Food Products. For the Food Safety Act of 2011 has been proposed by the Department of Agriculture. 
This is another key output of the TRTA2 SPS subcomponent, and we are pleased to report that this agenda is being supported by some of our devotees uh, members. <laughs> Through the sponsorship of the, uh, the Honorable Congressman Mark Riando El Mendoza and Congresswoman Sharon Garin, the Food Safety Act of 2011 has been filed as House Bill 4417. This proposed act as its counterpart, uh, Senate Bill Number 2805, introduced by uh, Senator Ricardo Angara. We look forward uh, to the continued support uh, when the proposed uh, law. Needless to say, we invite you, even in joining you, to support us too in behaving all the bills. Again, my sincere thanks, and we look forward to continued partnership with the EU and realizing meaningful initiatives to help the Philippine agriculture and fishery sector compete and win in the global market. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Secretary. Uh, now, with equal pleasure, I call on His Excellency, Ambassador of the EU Delegation to the Philippines, Ambassador Guy Ladin. Secretary Ankara and the Secretary Serrano, uh, Deputy Director General Sonko, ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to join you here today for the formal launch of the electronic portal for food and feed safety or SPS measures of the Department of Agriculture. Today we have come together to open the e-portal on SPS issuances of the Department of Agriculture. I would like to congratulate the team in the Department of Agriculture with the external experts who have put this in place. Agribusiness are busy people and are often operating in rural and sometimes remote areas. The increasing accessibility and transparency for SPS regulation can make their lives easier. So, be it a pineapple farmer in Davao del Sur or a fish operator in South Cotabato, food safety requirements will only be at a fingertip away. And as the Philippines put international requirements in its own legal insurances, this is also key to access foreign markets. <coughs> the EU is committed to open, fair and sustainable trade. It is also supporting efforts by the Philippines to fully reap the benefits of trade, among others by aligning to international standards and thereby accessing international markets. And this is where the EU-Philippine Trade-Related Technical Assistance Project comes in. It is clear that such project on trade needs to fully reflect the agricultural demand dimension which is why a special component on SPS was introduced. Indeed, Under Secretary Serrano is here today who is fully involved on this component and represents the department in the TRTA project steering committee. Let me just mention three examples of the impact achieved so far. Since the beginning of the project in 2007, export of tuna to the EU has more than doubled. The number of EU accredited establishments rose from 22 to 95. The latest report of the EU Food and Veterinary Office report acknowledges the improvement, improvements made over the years. The Philippines has the ambition to put its food safety regime on a new and modern legislative basis, the Food Safety Act, which was announced by the Secretary. This is a Philippine domestic affair. But since the Philippine Authority requested international expertise in support of this endeavor, the project was happy to provide it. Reliable and international, internationally recognized testing methods and procedures form the basis for compliance with international requirements. I am pleased to have learned that eight Department of Agriculture laboratories have completed the necessary document for ISO 17425 accreditation 
and two already have made the official request for accreditation. The European Union is today a unified market of 500 million consumers, comprising 27 member states. It is the world's largest, biggest trading bloc and an attractive market for agriculture export. In fact, the European Union imports more agriculture products from developing countries than all other OECD countries put together. For the Philippines, the EU is the fourth largest trading partner with bilateral trade at 500 billion pesos in 2010, which showed a growth rate of 34% that year. In fact, agriculture export grows even faster by 48% and reached 41 billion pesos, which is a 14% share of total export to the EU. And this is even more impressive when you think that agri-export are usually fully value-added value and like export in the manufacturer goods. The Philippines enjoys a solid trade surplus with the EU of 15 billion pesos. Perhaps you will be surprised by the fact that 75% of all cocoa nut oil imported by the EU comes from the Philippines, worth 21 billion pesos. But also fishery, notably tuna, a total of 7.5 billion pesos, and fruit, a total of 4.8 billion pesos, are major contributors to the Philippines' strong export performance. EU exports to, to the Philippines are by and large complementary with cereal, meat, dairy products, and animal feed. These figures clearly show that the EU is very open for agricultural trade. It is indeed a big advantage for the Philippine exporters to face the EU as a common market of 27 member states, with one set of regulations that apply to all. Both the EU and the Philippines are member of the WTO, and thus committed to fair and non-discriminatory treatment of imports and using SPS measures purely to protect human and animal health. I'm sure that on such a solid basis, our good cooperation and beneficial trade relationship will help to find solution for each other concern. Only yesterday, the European Commission highlighted trade-led growth as central to the modern development agenda of reducing poverty. Imagine economies like China, India, or Brazil are a good example of how opening to trade helps fighting poverty. A recent OECD study on trade and jobs showed that workers in open economy received pay three to nine times greater than those in closed economy. Trade also expands choices and lower prices for consumers. Let me conclude by congratulating the Department of Agriculture to this important step in increasing transparency and good governance. Trade is an important engine to fight poverty, especially agricultural trade. By ensuring open, sustainable, and fair trade, we can only make sure we can enjoy Philippine delicious sashimi or juicy pineapple in Europe. And in return, you may indulge in Italian prosciutto or French wine, but we can also make contributions in supporting Philippine farmers to make a better living by being able to export. Thank you very much.